and uh, it's a similar price as well and both of these provides unlimited storage and unlimited bandwidth when they say unlimited of course they uh, they have an acceptable use policy so unlimited may not actually mean unlimited if you're using their resources too much they will contact you and uh, ask you to upgrade and you might find that your services slow down a lot so that's just something to be aware of um, from your hosting provider you will get name server settings that you need to set in your domain name service to point to the hosting account and I'll show you where those are in in my Namecheap account I use two servers for my work at the moment just because I'm trying to move away from one and move towards another um, now these details will come from the server if I look at one of my domains and um, if I click through to well, let's go for that one the affiliate marketer.net it's not a domain I use much anymore uh, there's what I was saying about protecting your personal information which is accessible through who is I don't worry about that um, domain name server setup if I click through to there these are details that I've been provided by my hosting company and here is where they need to be set up in the Namecheap account you enter whatever you need to enter and you click on save changes and then it's done as it says the changes can take 24 hours to 48 hours for the changes to take effect that's because various sites on the internet cache these details um, but typically you'll see the change happen within a couple of minutes if you're using a browser to try and access your site it might take a longer time but it, it won't necessarily do so if I go to dojotool.com I've got that on my other domain and uh, if I click through to domain name server setup you can see there's um, different details there um, if I click on change contacts I can show you the type of information that that you're asked to provide um, you're asked to provide first name last name organization name would be your business name in my case I'm a sole trader so my business name is the same as my own name your full address where you're located your email address telephone number and fax number and you have to provide details of the registrant which is whoever's paying for it the administrative contact whoever receives the bills technical contacts um, whoever is contacted if there's any problems ah, billing contact is whoever receives a bill so don't actually know what the difference is between the billing contact and the administrative contact um, I'm a sole trader I don't have any employees so all of these are set to the same for me and that's probably going to be the case for most of the people attending this training right so the first thing you need to do is to uh, download and install WordPress now I've said you don't use Fantastico um, I'm not 100% sure of the reason why but I have heard bad things in the forums that people have said about using Fantastico to do an installation of WordPress although it is the fastest way you can do it it's probably to do with security um, there are certain aspects of WordPress that you need to know how to secure because um, 
people do try and hack into WordPress sites. It's just a fact of the business. So, uh, so you need to be aware of that. And I'm going to show you how to deal with that. Right, this uh, little link here. I'm going to copy that and uh, bring that up in the browser. If you do have any questions at any time, please do make use of the chat box and uh, input those questions. This is basically the details of how you do the installation. You download and unzip WordPress, create a MySQL database, rename wp-config sample.php to, to wp-config.php, open it, fill in your database details, uh, place it on your web server and run the install script. Now I do it in a slightly different way. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up a new subdomain on one of my domains and uh, I'm actually going to install WordPress on that subdomain so that you can see exactly how it's done. Um, now um, what I'm going to do then, if I go into my cPanel access, if one of my accounts you can get to see what it looks like. And here we have uh, domains, subdomains. So here is where I can set up a new subdomain. And um, I'm going to do that now. I'm going to... Uh, one of my niches that doesn't make a great deal of money, but it does make some money, is um, Flourish Coach, uh, which is all about just dating, really. Uh, so I'm going to add a shop to it, because I've got some... Uh, I've got some PLR that I can I can probably sell on that domain. So it's going to come in as public.html slash shop. So that will be the root directory for everything in shop.fluidcoach.net. So if I click on create, it'll just take a couple of seconds. doesn't normally take this long. Right, here we are. Okay, so now if I... Enter that domain. Okay, we've got this ugly forbidden thing at the moment. So I'm going to turn that into a WordPress installation. I'm going to install WordPress onto the root of that domain. So the first thing I need to do is to download WordPress. And I'll click through to WordPress. Uh, let's just zoom out a bit so that uh, you can see the whole screen. Okay, Word HTTP colon slash slash wordpress.org is where you want to be and you need to click on download wordpress 2.9.1 or whatever it happens to be when you when you see this okay and what you're going to want um, I would suggest you go for the dot zip type although for the purposes of what I'm going to 